Funding the police. It's a complete disaster. There's chaos at night. We don't have enough police. Mr. Johnson, this question is for you. On multiple occasions, you've spoken on the topic of defunding police. In 2020, you said, quote, defunding this failed system of incarceration and policing was not just admirable, but necessary, end quote. As far as redirecting funds, if we look at your record, you introduced a resolution and passed it with the support of others to redirect money from the sheriff's office to other areas. So first, do you acknowledge making those recorded and documented statements, yes or no? I'm not gonna defund the police. If you could answer the question though, yeah. do you acknowledge making the statements that I just read by quote, yes or no? What I've acknowledged is the fact that there are people who are incredibly, incredibly frustrated. Mr. Johnson, when, if I could get you back to the question, yeah, of if course. it's solely yes or no. Do you acknowledge making those statements? Look, you've yes already no? you've already quoted. What I'm saying is though, so you acknowledge is that it provides some statements? The, of course I'm acknowledging okay. it, but I want to so make sure that we have the context. I want to give you the opportunity to answer that. the question, but yeah. I just want to move on to the next part of it. I already knew it, man. When I when I was hearing this in 2000 and 2019, a lot of Democrats were crying out for def to defund the police because of the violence perpetrated toward black people. You know, when you do some research, you find out these numbers were skewed and the way the media promoted this stuff and talked about it wasn't, a, it wasn't correct either. Now, there are some serious and dire consequences as a result of the message defunding the police. And we're going to go listen to this one today. This is coming from Brett Cooper. Listen, man, this is a smart, beautiful girl. She knows what she's talking about. Uh, you're going to enjoy this. Without further ado, let's get into the heart of this message. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the page. Click the bell icon for more. Let's get in there. Friends that I want to discuss today. And this time, it is not one that started on TikTok or Instagram. What are you saying? I've actually touched on this before, but I've talked about, you know, specific iterations of this. We're going to talk about the topic more broadly today because there is an influx of these huge woke liberal corporations that love to brag about their very progressive beliefs and their wokeness and their anti-police rhetoric. But now they are fleeing their beloved blue democratic cities that enacted the policies that they asked for. Who would have guessed that a business would only be so woke until it starts to impact their money and their safety? It's performative activism, and we called it from the start. Before we jump into this, though, make sure that you like this video, subscribe to this channel if you have not already, and ring that notification bell so that you never miss a comment section or off the clock episode. Okay, so today I want to take you through some of this cause and effect cycle that blue democratic cities are seeing from their anti-police policies and the beliefs that they enacted after the 2020 riots. Now, it's happening all over the country, but one of the most notable examples and one that we've talked about at length before, because this has happened so often, is how San Francisco is turning into a business ghost town. Here's one story that we did not cover back in June. Old Navy to Nordstrom, half of retailers fleeing downtown San Francisco. They wrote, as about two dozen stores have announced plans to vacate San Francisco as its crime issues remain unresolved, retail crime has been a hot topic that has proven difficult to solve. Some such retailers, which include Old Navy, Banana Republic, Crate and Barrel, Amazon Go, Saks Off, Fifth Anthropology and Office Depot have issued statements explaining inventory shrink and other foot traffic problems that made business in the area untenable. Foot traffic problems. That's a really nice way to say unbridled crime. That's the politically correct way to say that. Now, it is not just the businesses suffering. Take it from a San Francisco resident herself. I'm literally shaking right now. I was just getting groceries and I live in San Francisco and I never really feel fully safe. If you live in San Francisco, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about. And I just got groceries. I'm walking out of the store and this guy is walking past me and says, move you stupid bitch. And he spits in my face, but it's all over my face. And then I say, excuse me, did you just spit in my face? And he says, move or I'll rip you. There's also people everywhere and everyone's just walking by because they're like, I can't handle something else in San Francisco. It's always something else. I don't even know why I'm posting this. If you live in San Francisco, do you feel this way all the time? I don't feel safe ever. I literally never feel safe. It's better when it's daylight, but nighttime, no, not leaving my house. Imagine intentionally living someplace like that, where you don't even feel safe leaving your apartment in broad daylight. I mean, this, this is sad, man. This is sad. This lady, I'm, I'm sure she, she, she never voted for this. Hopefully not. But even if she did, it's still wrong. Um, this is sad. Can you imagine living like that? Like, I kind of mess. And this could happen to the best and the worst of us. You know what I'm saying? So here you are in your city, violence and crimes all over the place as a result of policies, <laughs> policies uh, promulgated by people who had no idea, did not take into account the consequences of their decisions. That's just crazy to me. 
this should not be the case. It's sad. We live in a very strange times. So I'll tell you that. The city is just not safe. Just like going on the internet is not safe, which is why you need ExpressVPN. Because using the internet without ExpressVPN is like leaving your laptop open and unattended at the coffee shop table. Most of the time, you're probably fine. But what if you turn around one day and your laptop is just gone? com slash cooper sadly you cannot trust cities like san francisco to keep you safe but express vpn will at least keep you safe when you're online and obviously i feel for that woman that video seemed very genuine and i understand what she's going through because i've lived in la for 10 years as a woman i know that it's not fun but ironically after that video was posted and it got you know seven million views people found old content of hers where she was marching to defund the police and supporting blm and now here she is three years later oh no <laughs> oh the internet is such a strange place i'll tell you what it, oh it's so bad it's so bad here you are thinking that you are just talking about this issue because it just matters to you this is you know the situation for what it is and so on and you think that's the end of it N no here is the internet exposing your history going to show that and again i still don't blame people like this i understand you know what i'm saying especially doing uh doing George Floyd's doing the George Floyd era and the emotional activism that led to a lot of people making decisions that they were not really it wasn't rational man we were being irrational we were just doing things out of fear and emotional outburst um as a result of these decisions now here we are reaping the consequences you know that's why you should never make a decision when you're mad this is why, we, this is why you gotta you gotta think from cause to effect before you make these crazy decisions <laughs> Later, suffering the consequences of the policies and the ideology that she pushed, that she marched to enact. And now crime is everywhere, all over her city. Nobody is protecting her. Nobody on the street, no bystanders want to help because they could be convicted of a crime for even stepping in. Like that is the result of things that you advocated for. But anyway, this is not just a San Francisco issue because there were reports coming out from all over the country. The corporations as big as Nike are even fleeing other cities like Portland because of all the crime and the theft taking place. Here's an article about that. Nike is permanently closing this massive factory store for a scary reason. The store, which subtly shut down in 2022, has decided to make the decision permanent as a wave of issues increase. Issues meaning massive theft that they cannot control and that the police do nothing about because they have no money and they are not allowed to. Why do they refuse to say, why, why are they playing with words like that? I mean, it's just what it is, crimes, thefts. These are people that are doing it. Um, what kind of people are doing this? Well, black people are doing it. <laughs> it's, not, it's not a lie. Majority of these people that are committing these crimes in those blue cities are being done by the hands of black people. That's not racist to say that. That's true. <laughs> it's true. And why are they doing this would be the question, though. You know what I'm saying? Like, what's going on in their home? What's happening in their lives that is causing them to make these decisions? That should be the discussion that we are having today. But um, however, we just want to cover it up and acting like it's not a real issue. What's going on in the home? What's going on in the psyche? What's going on in the mind? What's going on in the world? What's going on with their inner city? What's happening with the police? What kind of opportunities are they being given? So these are things we should be asking and asking why some of these inner cities crimes are being committed by the majority of black people. You know, so, OK, I mean, it's still an issue that needs to be addressed. Again, the media won't even say it like that, because if, if you say that, that's racist. You can't talk about how black people are messing up. And I think if we acknowledge that the fact is coming from blacks, at least we can address the issue for what it is at least holding each other accountable and finding ways to help our youth who are literally going crazy in this culture. But hey, you can't say that if you're white. That's racist. Boom. Roasted. I mean, Nike, guys, the most insufferable, woke, defund the police, ignore our crimes against humanity, liberal corporation that I could think of doesn't exactly like the results of no more cops in their cities. Tim Pool posted about this. <laughs> of course not. It hurts. And said, Nike requested special police detail to protect the store. Portland said no. Nike said later, bitches. Portland said, oh, no. Please disperse. Nothing to see here. It's so offensive to me that Nike would even think 
to ask for special police detail. Like you advocated for these policies. It's like the celebrities that walk around with their private security and their gated homes in Beverly Hills and go, oh, yes, we do not need the police. They are so bigoted. They are so awful. They are so racist. Like we don't need them. We just need community support to protect us. Like woman, you have private security 24 seven. It is not about you. It's about the people in the community who need to be protected and cannot afford to have private security 24 seven. Exactly. She hit it right on the head. You. It's about the people in the community who need to be protected and cannot afford to have private security 24 7 or live in a gated community. God. Anyway, somebody commented and said, Why? It's only a peaceful protest. Somebody else said, Isn't Nike the self appointed leader of virtue signaling and inclusiveness? You mean revenue really does come first? For shame. Ugh, Nike is in fact capitalist. I'm so sorry to break it to all of you. Smashing. Yay, capitalism. Somebody else said, Oh no, where will the looters get their shoes and what will they wear when they can't get them? More than likely, they will go to another town and loot one there and guys the crazy part is you know these issues had to be extreme because this particular nike store had been in portland since 1984 this was one of the original flagship nike stores and nike is based out of oregon so this was not like it was a random new pop-up store in some random part of the country this is where they are based this was a long time, very important part of their company, and they had to get out because of all of the crime. Here's some more on that. There was a news station that was reporting on this. And it's called money, baby. It's called money. A lot of them are just virtue signaling. They don't really care about people. They don't care about black people. They don't care about the minority in the sense that you might think they do. What they really care about is their financial gain, how much benefit they can come and get out of this stuff. That's why all that ESG, DEI, you know, all that critical race theory, CRT, all of it is, is money driven. All these companies that are in this is because they're looking at a long term goal and how much they can get back in revenue. It is not about the people. It, it's not. That's what I'm telling you, man. Common sense, truth, Jesus Christ, the scripture, the Bible. We, we got to be about the people. But as far as these companies are concerned, they're about themselves. It's always been that way. But again, hey, uh, at least now they are realizing the danger of these policies. And they said that the Nike store had the second highest rate of reported shoplifting incidents in 2019 at 437 cases reported behind a nearby Target with 650 cases. That is insane. The article went on and said most that stores, however, do not report shoplifting incidents. Nike security guards, they had to hire security guards, told the outlet that they are prohibited from stopping thieves and are instead there to symbolically offer safety for shoppers and employees. So those numbers might be even higher because they don't even dare report them to the police or write them down anywhere because it's so normal. And the government and law enforcement cannot and will not do anything about them. Law enforcement cannot. They're not allowed to. The government will not do anything about them. I mean, this entire situation is awful. Because we have underfunded law enforcement that literally gets targeted and prosecuted when they do their jobs correctly. We have politicians making it illegal to go after petty theft, petty crimes like these. And we have DAs that are bought by lobbyists and globalists who just turn a blind eye about all of it. And it is turning our cities into a dystopia. And that Nike story really blew me away the most because of all of the beliefs that Nike has expressed over the past few years, how proudly they boasted their wokeness just to flee from the fight, which is just incredibly laughable. But for Portland, it does doesn't just stop with Nike because so many other corporations and businesses could not be fleeing fast enough. Here's another article about it. They said Walmart joined the ranks of Nike, Cracker Barrel, and regional grocery store Green Zebra when it closed its two stores in Portland. The article goes on and says rising crime in Portland is undeniable, with homicides and robberies increasing after its police budget was cut from $244 million to $229 million in 2020, and businesses are suffering. Columbia Sportswear-owned brand Sorrel moved its headquarters from Portland, citing safety as an issue. Nike has also complained about the amount of crime in the city, and REI announced that it would be closing its Portland store due to its highest numbers of break-ins and thefts in two decades, despite actions to provide extra security, despite the fact that all of these stores have hired private security guards to stand outside. Now, with this trend happening all over the country with so many different companies, we obviously have to ask, where are they going? When they leave Portland, when they leave San Francisco, where are they heading? Well, many are ditching the consequences of their actions by fleeing to safer red states. Can you imagine that? Like Facebook slash. <laughs> I knew that was coming. I knew that was coming. Go to cities where there, there's police, there's protection. Go to cities where you can have a business and avoiding just the criminals going after your business. It's amazing to see how this stuff plays out. It's all about you love the minority. But as soon as the minority rise against you, they start tearing apart your business. You say, oh, I'm out. I'm going to red states. I'm going to 
Republican run red states so that we can make money. <laughs> I thought you love the people. Do you? Again, that's called reality check. Let's see if there will be any difference from this point forward. Meta is literally building huge campuses in Alabama and Idaho. Here are articles about that. Meta is building a giant $800 million data center in Idaho. That's very close to Boise. Here's something from Bama Buzz. Facebook data center in Huntsville makes plans for expansion. Oracle has plans for their new headquarters to be in Nashville. Like, what's next? Like, I thought the elites looked down their noses at those of us who dared to live in those middle America states. Now, obviously, it is pretty easy to figure out why this is happening. Taxes, crime, and almost anything associated with negativity flourishes in blue democratic run cities. And when you come to a red leaning state, even if you were in a blue city like Nashville, which is in a red state of Tennessee, suddenly you feel safer and you're making more money while paying less taxes. And it's just crazy how that all works. Maybe one day they'll learn. Maybe one day they will learn. Friends, a lot more could be said about this. But again, what we are seeing here is the result of democratic policies that are rooted in emotionalism, not common sense, and they did not think about the cause and effect of what could possibly happen as a result of these laws. Um, sad because people are suffering. Uh, we don't. I don't make light of issues where there, is, there are lives that are impacted in a negative way. However, we do need to look at the situation and learn from it. What could we do differently? Well, one I will say is to vote differently. <laughs> vote differently. And if for some reason that's not going to change anything because the majority could choose to vote Democrats and keep pushing these policies like we see in Detroit and different places in Chicago. Um, and so in New York City as well, it's kind of crazy over there that sanctuary cities are losing their minds now. So it, anyway, um, voting is one thing or move, move, take your family and go, go to a red state, <laughs> move to Florida or something move move to a different state where they 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 do move to texas i guess i don't texas has their problem too it's not perfect there but at least some of these issues are not as prevalent as it is in many of these you know blue cities and everything so third i will say <laughs> you know pray pray for the condition of the people man and and also vote out of office some of these people that are pushing these uh diabolical policies that are completely inhumane it's really not about the people anymore it's about ideology it's about ideologues it's about perspective it's about you know virtue signaling it's not based on truth anyway let me share something with you here very quickly and there are a few verses i would like to run through one in particular is that in jesus says in actually in luke 17 that as it was in the days of noah so shall it be in the days when the son of man is revealed Jesus told us in that day, they did marry and they did drink and they, 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 they were given to wives until the day Noah entered into the ark. Uh, the flood came and destroyed them all. So listen, the days of Noah are here. So when you go to Genesis chapter six, you get a picture of what's going on in the days of Noah. Um, what's happening here, the spirit of the Lord said he would not always strive with men talking about how God is not always going to put up with men's evil doings. Going, going after that, we are told that in verse 5, it was so bad. Look what the Bible says about this. And it, it, Listen, man, when God tells you it was bad, it was bad. And I'll tell you what, we are experiencing similar, similar experience as it was in the days of Noah. God saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually, friends. According to the word of God, things were so bad in the days of Noah that it made God sad. He repented the Lord that he has made men on the earth. He grieved them at his heart. Can you imagine God being sorry that he created humanity because of the wickedness? The Bible says, the Lord says, I will destroy men who I'm creating upon the face of the earth, both men and beasts and crooked things and fowls of the earth. For he repented me that I have made them. Even God saw the wickedness of men. God felt sorry that he created humanity. Wow, what a shame. Look what it says, furthermore, in verse 11 of the same chapter, the earth was corrupt before God and the earth was filled with violence. And we see in it today, God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all the flesh had corrupted his ways upon the earth. Friends, there it is right now. We are living in a time of corruption and evil doings. Um, so this is why, friends, we 
art to trust in the Lord. But here's the amazing news. And I want to read this final verse here. And I'm going to bring this thing to an end. Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And I would like to say to you today, have you found grace in the eyes of the Lord in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom we are called to shine as light in the world? Friends, listen, these, these policies in these cities are ridiculous, man. They are ridiculous. But I'll tell you what, God is calling us to be the light of the world. Vote differently. If you have to move and save, keep your family safe away from this stuff, do it. And at the same time, pray for your city. Pray for your city. Minister to the needs of those who may be suffering irrespective of the fact they might have voted for these policies. I get it. Ideas have consequences. But human beings are human beings. We still got to advocate for them. Okay? So that's where I stand when it comes to that. Anyway, share your thought and perspective with me. I want to hear from you. Link in the description below. Like and subscribe to the page. Please do like and for more. Thank you so much for listening. Have a good one. Bye.